um, the Special Tribunal for Lebanon, um, a response to the assassination of ex-premier of Lebanon, Rafiq Hariri. Uh, it also now is concerned with related terrorist explosions, uh, some 13 in all at the last count, which were political assassinations either of eminent journalists or of political uh, leaders. Um, this is important to understand and let's go to a, a brief history of Lebanon and Syria because the, the tale is conjoined. Um, Syria and Lebanon were originally one geopolitical state. Um, Damascus was the regional power for the Ottoman Empire for centuries and the Lebanese and the Syrians have a common language, common traditions. Uh, if you go to Damascus you'll notice the food is similar to that in Beirut. Very, very similar uh, people, um, all made up from uh, what were tribes and, 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 and people coming into the area as it was the crossroads for the Silk Road. And, and Damascus, as we know, um, was a very rich city, um, a city of, of, of great wealth. And Beirut, as, as a port, was a less important city until it became part of the French colonial empire. Um, Greater Syria uh, covered, in fact, Jordan and Israel as well under the Ottoman Empire. Um, the World War I and the defeat of the Ottoman Empire changed the uh, geopolitical map, and the League of Nations in 1922 um, split up Syria because it decided that it was too powerful to leave this state down there in the Levant as well as the Middle East and split it up between the UK which received Jordan uh, and uh, Palestine and France uh, which received uh, what is Syria today uh, and the Lebanon. And so the political map uh, was changed and um, Syria still a large state. Uh, Lebanon a, a small parcel uh, of a state and they tried to take natural borders such as the Golan Heights to divide the area uh, and sketch out a map. Not done in a particularly scientific way um, and there's something about Winston Churchill's lunch and, and in drawing across the map that straight line we see covering Iraq, Jordan uh, and Syria. After the Second World War, um, Syria became involved in the Arab-Israeli War when after the Holocaust, after 1945 in the ship exodus, um, the uh, Jews from the um, Central Europe and even America, other Western states, came to establish uh, the new homeland for them, uh, which was to be within the territory of the Arabs who were in the Palestinian area. And eventually the Arabs, which had been a, a rather disparate group, the, the sons of Ibn Saud, I mean, some of you may have read the seven pillars of wisdom, disparate groups, uh, eventually <coughs> mobilized and the Arab-Israeli war, the first one in 1948, um, took place and uh, um, Israel in fact uh, beat back uh, the Arab forces. Um, and uh, 
the Golan Heights became an area where the Syrians uh, retreated to. And uh, Israel occupied about 78% of the area of historical Palestine. Um, war again broke out in 1967, uh, very famously, when Golda Meir was the uh, uh, president of Israel. The Arab state chose that time in 1967 uh, because there was no settlement of the Palestinian issue uh, to attack Israel. Meanwhile, big camps have built up on the West Bank. I was actually born in um, Jordan, in Zerka, and, and when I was born there, it was a small little village almost, north, north of Iman, Iman. Um, in fact, the house we lived in was P.O. Box 1, Zerka. And it's now about a million and a half, two million people there, massive city, and it's all Palestinian. And so the people had gone out of the former Palestinian area, crossed the West Bank, gone into Jordan uh, and set up there. Um, Israel, in repulsing the Syrian uh, attack, uh, captured the Golan Heights, uh, which is today still a, a source of, of controversy. Um, the Arab, other Arab states, Egypt, um, Lebanon to a certain degree, were, were also repulsed by the Israeli forces. 1973, the Yom Kippur War um, erupted. They took their moment at the time of Yom Kippur, and uh, Syria and Egypt staged a, a surprise attack. Uh, defeated again, and the Israelis decided to move into Lebanon, take uh, the Lebanese territory, use it as a buffer zone, fortify themselves there. Similarly, the Golan Heights, similarly, are on the West Bank, and also the Gaza Peninsula. Um, this had an effect of destabilizing uh, Lebanon, and a, a civil war started in, in 1975 that we frequently saw on our TV screens and didn't end uh, until 1990. Um, Syria sent in troops in 1976 into that part of Lebanon not occupied uh, by Israel and to try and preserve the position, in fact, of the Maronite Christians, which is uh, 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 um, something that many people um, have forgotten. But then it became involved in the um, factions that were at that time present in Lebanon. There was the Druze militia, uh, Wali Jumblat, there were various Islamic groups, um, and the, the state had destabilized. Israel down in the south, Syria had come in to protect, and uh, Beirut became a, a, a dangerous place in the, the late 70s, many kidnaps, and Syria then began a, a presence of, of being in the uh, Lebanon for some 30 years, uh, and that's important. And we go and look through the issues concerning the Lebanon Tribunal, and I suggest any of you taking on any of this work, looking at it, <coughs> Brief yourself in the history, because these people know it, and you will need a position, you'll need to understand it, um, because it is very important to them. Um, a, a, an agreement was passed called the Taif Agreement, which was supported by the Arab League, as well as the West, uh, concerning Syria's presence in uh, the northern part of Lebanon and indeed the central part because it was a stabilizing influence and Syria began the attempt to crack down on these disparate groups 
all of whom were trying to seize power. Remember, these were manufactured states, and um, they had developed very much uh, factions and rivalries, and uh, people could spot opportunities in a power vacuum to uh, seize control of the state uh, for themselves. Um, and worth remembering, when the Lebanese Civil War in 1990 officially ended and uh, a peace was brokered, Syria was given the credit for having been the stabilizing force um, within the state. Um, and then this started to become a bone of contention with the West. <coughs> because they didn't want Syria in Lebanon. And Israel down in the south of Lebanon. And whilst you've got Israel there, Syria was going to remain. Eventually in the year 2000, May the 25th, <coughs> in accordance with a UN Security Council Resolution 425, Israel withdrew from southern Lebanon, rolled its tanks back, kept to the border, fortified the border, and, and left Lebanon. Syria remained, and there was great controversy um, about it remaining there. Um, in 2005, Syria was forced to withdraw under pressure from the United Nations after the assassination of Rafi Kariri. So in March 2005, Syria leaves Lebanon. And it was after this assassination. And there was great public acclamation in the streets, great feeling of Lebanese nationalism. Um, and um, the real birth of a feeling of Lebanese independence uh, started to begin. Um, there are important UN resolutions that you should know about that are probably the most important uh, in the region and amongst the most cited in any UN documents are the three from this region. Um, Security Council Resolution 237, June 1967, 242 in the No 